In the last video, we created a very simple reinforcement learning environment. The way we visualized it was using print statements. Today, we're going to make a very simple upgrade. We're going to use Pygame to render some very simple images onto the screen to represent our environment. Okay, I'm in my VS Code project. The first thing I want to do is to bring in the images. Let me create a new folder. I'll call it sprites. In game development, sprites are 2D images. Here's my robot, the floor, and the package. Now I'm in the warehouse robot code. I'm going to import Pygame. Pygame comes with Gymnasium, so there's no need to perform an additional install. I'm also importing the system and OS module. Now I want to initialize Pygame, so let me create a new function. I'm putting an underscore here to signify that this is an internal function not to be called outside of this class. Before using Pygame, we need to call pygame.init. We also need to initialize the display module. Now I want to calculate the size of the window. A cell is one of these squares. Now you can certainly use Pygame to get the resolution of your screen and then using that calculate the size of the cells. All that is just basic math. So instead of making you watch me do basic math, I'm just going to hard code the height and the width to be 64. My window size is going to be the width multiplied by the number of columns and then the height multiplied by the number of rows. The next thing I'm going to do is to load the assets, starting with the blue robot, which resides in the sprites folder under the current folder. So all it's doing is constructing the path. Pass the path to pygame.image.load. That's going to load the image into this variable. Most likely the image is probably not going to be 64 by 64, so I need to scale it. I'll call transform.scale, give it the image, and give it the size, which is 6464. I'll do the exact same thing for the floor image and the package image. Before I go any further, I want to show you how easy it is to navigate Pygame's documentation. Let's look at the functions that I just used. Transform. Transform's right here. Click that. I use transform.scale. Click on that. Here it gives you the definition and explains what the scale function does. And then another one is image.load. Now where's the image? Here's image. Here's the load function. Okay, so it's very easy to navigate Pygame's documentation. So if you see something that I'm using that you're not totally sure what it is, just jump over here and uh, check out the documentation. Now that we have the assets loaded, we can render it to the screen. Let me jump to the render function. This is code for printing. We don't need to print these anymore. I'll get rid of that. I'm still looping through my rows and columns. For each one of these coordinates, I want to render the floors. Before that, I need to calculate where to put the floors. The way to calculate it is to use the coordinate column, the current column times the width of the cell, the current row times the height of the cell. If we're at zero, zero, it's going to start rendering at the top left, zero, zero. When we're at cell column one, one times the width, 64, height times zero, zero. So this is the spot, 64, zero is where it's going to render the next one. And let's say the robot's here at cell one, one, one times 64, it's going to be starting at this coordinate, 64, 64. We're going to start rendering at this position, 64, comma 64. We use the window surface that was created in the init function. We call blit to draw something. What we want to draw is the floor at the position that we just calculated. If you want to see what blit does, surface.blit, draw one image onto another. Now before I add the robot and the uh, target, let me just run the code and we can see what the progress is like. But before we end the render function, we need to call the update in order to render the stuff to the screen. Now I'm going to hit F5 to run the code. 
Okay, let me see if I call the init function. Ah, we have not called the init function. Okay, run this again. Oh, I haven't declared the window surface. Go back to the init function. After calculating the window size, we need to initialize Pygames display with that window size. This is where we get the window surface. We run. Okay, it ran too fast and it came up and disappeared. So let me do a infinite loop in my main. Okay, now it's running indefinitely. Let me stop it. Okay, back to my render function. Let's render the package. If my coordinates are matching where the target position is supposed to be, I'm going to draw the package. I'm going to draw it in the same position that we calculated from above. Also, if the coordinates is where the robot currently is, we'll use the same function to draw the robot in the same position. The assets are going to be drawn in this order. You see the floor first. If the package is there, you see the package. If the robot is there, you see the robot. Let me run this. Now you see the robot moving around, searching for the package. But it's going way too fast. We need to control the uh, frames per second. Let me go to my init function. I'm going to let the frames per second be passed in from externally, but I'll default it to 1. I'll also save it. In order to control frames per second, we need the game clock. So in my initPy game function, I'm going to get an instance of the game clock. And then in the render function, we'll use the game clock's tick function and give it the frames per second. This line here will slow down the game. So let me run it. The robot should be moving pretty slowly. Well, it's not moving right now. It wasn't moving before because it was trying to go up and left, but finally it got out of the corner. So this is how you control the frames per second. Now instead of printing the actions here, maybe we want to print it onto the window itself. Now let me stop this. Back in the init, let me add the font that I want to use. So I'm using pygame.font and I just pick a font and a size. I want to print the action on the bottom. So I'm going to get the height of the font, save it here. And then down here where we calculate the window size, I'm going to increase the height by the height of the font. Okay. If I run it now, we should see that extra space on the bottom down here. Notice that it's all black down here. Now, in order to print the action, I need to remember what the last action was. So back in my init function, I'm going to initialize my last action variable to blank. And then in my perform action function, I'll save the action that was performed. And now in the render function, remember the background was all black because we didn't put a background color. So I'm going to fill the window service with, with a white color. Also, if I don't clear the background each time, there could be leftover text from the previous frames. Now to render the text. Pygame renders text as images. We'll use font.render, give it the text that we want to render. Anti-alias, let's turn it on. Color of the text. Just make it black, background of the text. We'll make it white. Just like the assets above, we need to calculate the position of where we want to put this text image. Now I'm going to put it at zero, zero, and then the window size minus the font height. That's going to calculate this coordinate for me. And just like render the images, and just like rendering images above, we render the text image the same way. Okay, now run it, see what happens. All right, here's our text coming up right here. Now you'll notice that if I click on uh, the close window X here, 
it's not going to go well, it's going to crash. We need to handle these events. I define a new function called process events. What this does is it loops through all the events that's been queued up. If the event type is pygame.quit, pygame.quit means this event, clicking on the X. I'll just quit pygame and uh, I'll just exit the whole program. If the event is a key press and the key being pressed is escape, I'll also just quit the program. Now we gotta find a spot to call process events. I'll just do it at the beginning of the render function. Okay, let's go. All right, now if I click the X here, it should close Pi game. We can also try escape. I'm going to hit escape on my keyboard, also quit spiking. Now that our warehouse robot has been modified, what do we need to do in the gym environment? Now remember we added to the init function, the warehouse robot init function, frames per second. This is where we can pass the frames per second metadata to here. I'll call self metadata render frames per second. One seems slow, we can do four. Down in the main, I'll comment out the code to check the environment. We know the environment is good. We can uncomment this when we want to check the environment again. Let me change this to a infinite while loop. Here, if we encounter terminated, meaning that the robot finds the package, I want to reset the I want to reset the environment, which means the package will get relocated to a new position and the robot has to find it again. Let's run it. There we go. It just found the package and the package moved. Okay, we don't need to watch anymore. Okay, so that was our small upgrade for the day. If you enjoyed this video, give me a like, subscribe, drop me a comment. Thanks for watching.